When it comes to doing statistics, there are some things that the TI-84 does that you need to know about. We're going to start by entering this data list, and then we're going to figure out some statistics with it. We're going to make a box and whisker plot. We're going to do a linear regression, so many things. But we've got to start by entering some data. To do that, we're going to go into the stat menu. Almost all of what we do is in this stat menu. So I'm going to click here. And then as I'm entering lists, think of it as editing data. So I'm going to hit enter. Now I've got something in L1 and something in L2. Actually, I've got several things. I want to start by clearing this. So we're going to arrow up to the list name. Now it's got the list elements all at the bottom of the screen. That means that I'm able to hit clear and then enter. Warning, do not hit delete and then enter. That will get rid of the list entirely. We want the list there. I'm going to do the same to L2. Yours might already be cleared, but mine isn't. List name, clear and then enter. I'm going to put my cursor there. I'm going to highlight that very first cell under the L1 name. Let's go ahead and enter some data. So I've got 18, I think I've got three of those. One, two, three, and then I've got one 19. I've got three 20s two 21s and one 22. And I want to compute some statistics. I want to compute like the mean and the median quartiles, things like that. I want to go back into my home screen to do this. To do that, I'm going to hit second followed by mode, which gives me quit. So second followed by mode. And now I want to go back to the stat menu. This time we're going to choose calc to calculate statistics. And I want to do this one variable statistics. It's already highlighted, so I can hit enter or you can choose number one. I'm just going to hit enter and it's asking me where my data lives. Now my data does live in L1. If you had a different list named here or if your data was in a different list, you can get there by doing second followed by the number of lists you want. So if I did say two, then that would put me into L2. Let me arrow back and I'm going to go second L1 because my values were there in L1. I don't want anything for the frequency list. We'll do a frequency list next. But for now, I'm counting all of these values one time. So I'm going to leave the frequency list blank. I'm going to arrow down one more time and then hit enter to calculate. So enter to calculate. Now the calculator gives you tons of stats, the most important of which are the very first one, that X bar, that's our mean. As I arrow down, the next important one is that sample standard deviation, S sub X. And then it also gives me that population standard deviation sigma sub x. This n equals 10 means that I've got 10 values in my list. And I notice that there's this little down arrow next to Q1. That means that I can use my down arrow to look at more results. So as I arrow down until I get to the end, I can look at the rest of these. And it gives me my five number summary, which is the minimum quartile one, which is 18, the median, which is 20, and quartile three, which is 21. And then finally, our maximum, which is 22. Now there's two really great ways that you can get back to these numbers. Let's say that you had just done some calculation like three plus three, and notice how those statistics went away. You can rerun one variable statistics by bringing up that last input. You would do second followed by enter. There's my three plus three. So I'm gonna do second followed by enter again. There's my one variable stats and it will run the statistics again. The other way that you can do this, let's say that you were doing like, I don't know, the square root of nine. Okay, so you've got the square root of nine, but you couldn't remember what the standard deviation was. Well, all of those values have been stored in those statistical variable names. So I'm gonna go over here to the VARS menu, clicking on VARS. Uh, notice how number five is statistics. I'm gonna arrow down, or you could just type number five. I'm gonna arrow down and then hit enter. Here are all of the statistics and more that my calculator just computed for us. So let's say for example, I wanted that population standard deviation. I arrow down to select it and then hit enter and then enter again. So it's stored those values. Okay, so we have done statistics on a single list of data. 
but let's group this data instead. Now I had values of 18, which showed up three times, 19, which showed up one time, um, 20 was three times, 21 was twice, and 22 was one time. So instead of typing these values in individually, we're gonna type them in as grouped data. We're gonna go back to the stat menu. So stats, I'm gonna edit my data list. So I just hit enter. And I wanna clear what I had. I don't want that data listed individually. I arrow up to the list name, clear, and then enter. Over here in L1, I'm gonna list those data values a single time. And then in L2, I'm gonna list their frequencies or how many of them I have. My data values were 18, so I can type 18, enter, 19, enter, 20, enter, 21, and 22. Okay, arrowing over to list two, I'm right there below the L2 name. So how many of those 18s did I have? I had three of them. I had one of the 19s. I had three 20s as well, two 21s, and one 22. I can compute statistics with this grouped data using my data list as L1 and my frequency list as L2. We're gonna quit to get back to the home screen. So second followed by quit. I'm here in the home screen and I wanna do one variable statistics again. Back into the stat menu. I'm gonna go over to calc and I want one variable statistics. And I do have L1 as my list. That's where my data values live for sure. But this time I also have a frequency list in L2. So I'm gonna go second followed by two for L2, and then continuing to arrow down, calculate. Notice how we get exactly the same values that we had when we listed all of those values separately. The next thing that you need to know is that your calculator does statistical plots. We're gonna be looking at a box plot like this one. Now I'm gonna use the data that we were just working with, and I'm gonna show it to you just to make sure that we're working on the same page. So stat, followed by edit, and I've got my data here in L1 and their frequencies there in L2. I'm gonna quit here, so second followed by quit. We want stat plot, which is the second of your y equals key. So I'm gonna go second followed by y equals. Now I wanna turn plot one on and it already is, but if yours isn't, that's okay. We're gonna choose plot one. It's already highlighted, so I'm gonna hit enter. I wanna choose on, so if yours happens to be like this and it's off, you're gonna arrow over and turn plot one to on. Now down on type, I'm just arrowing down. I've got several different types that I can choose. Notice how there are two different box plots. That first box plot has a couple dots there on the end, it's super hard to see. That one excludes outliers, it lists them separately. And then that second one includes the outliers on those whiskers. I'm gonna use this second one today. I'm gonna to hit enter to select that. Arrowing down, it wants to know where your X list is. This is your data list. And yes, we did have our data in L1. If you don't have L1 here, that's fine. You're gonna do second followed by one for L1. And then our frequency. I'm using a frequency list, but if I wasn't, I would leave this as one. I would just want every value to show up a single time, but that's not what I've got here. I want each of my values to show up the number of times that I've got an L2. So we're gonna put L2 here. Second followed by two for L2, and then let's enter. Now I wanna look at this plot. And to look at this plot, let's first check to see what y equals looks like. If I go to y equals, I have another funky function here. I wanna get rid of that, so I'm gonna clear. So I'm only looking at plot one is what I've got highlighted. Now I wanna hit graph, and it's gonna graph my data, and it actually is not showing my data at all. If you think about it, my lowest value was 18. This viewing screen right now goes from negative 10 to 10. The absolute easiest way to see your box plot or to see any statistical plot is to click your zoom button and then go down to zoom stat, which is number nine. You can arrow down or you can hit number nine. I'm gonna arrow down and then enter and it does such a nice job. We can also check to see what the quartiles, the minimum, the quartiles and the maximum are, that five number summary. 
by hitting the trace button. So if I hit that trace button and then use my left and right arrows, I've got a median there at 20. I've got a quartile one at 18. This is also my minimum. I'm gonna arrow over to the right. I've got my maximum there at 22 and I skipped, I think, quartile three there at 21. The next thing that you want to be able to do with your calculator is to work with two variables. We're going to be looking at the variables of age and screen time, and we're going to look for a relationship between those two. So the first thing that we want to do, of course, is to enter this data. You guys have this down. I'm just going to go into my stat menu, so stat, and then enter for edit. I'm actually going to clear what I had here. And let's go ahead and enter this data. So I've got ages 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. And then we've got our screen times for the day. So our screen times for the day are 420. And then I've got um, 389, 410, 370 minutes, and then 330 minutes. The best way to check to see if there's a relationship between these two is by looking at a scatter plot. But I'm going to show you two ways. One is by looking at a scatter plot, which is just visually seeing if it looks like there's a relationship. But then I'm also going to show you how to come up with the equation that would give you that relationship and our correlation coefficient, which actually tells me how strong it is. OK, so first things first, let's do another statistical plot. I want to go to my stat plot. I'm going to quit here for second followed by quit. And then I want stat plot. So second followed by stat plot. And I'm just going to use the first one, enter. But I want it to be a scatter plot instead. So I'm going to leave this on and I want to choose this to be a scatter plot. So I'm hovering over the scatter plot. Then I'll hit enter to select. Now notice how the prompts changed to the X list and the Y list. I do have those ages in L1 and my screen times in L2. If you didn't, you could type it in, right? So second followed by L1 for L1, enter, second followed by L2 or whichever list yours is in and then enter. You can also select a different mark. This would be where your dots are. I'm just gonna leave that as that little square and I'm ready to graph it, so graph. And this was my box plot view. So I need to do a zoom stat again. So zoom followed by a zoom stat all the way down and then enter. So it looks like I've got this linear relationship. As ages increase, my screen time is decreasing. But we can do so much better than that. Let's find the equation of the line that models this data, my regression equation. And I'm also going to find the correlation coefficient r, which tells me how strong this relationship is. Let's exit the graph by doing second followed by quit. There's one really important thing that I want you to make sure you've got turned on to get the R, that correlation coefficient value. And it's diagnostic on, I wish it was set up automatically, but it's not. So we're gonna do that by going to the catalog. So I'm gonna go second followed by zero to get to the catalog. And I'm looking for diagnostic on. Now I can arrow through here until I get to the Ds, but you could also do um, alpha followed by D to get there, but I'm actually almost there. Um, diagnostic on is what I want. I'm going to hit enter and then it says done. I just hit enter again and it says done. Now it's going to show me that R value, that correlation coefficient. We're going to run a linear regression to get the equation of the line that models that data. To do that, we're going to go to the stat menu and then arrow to the right to get to that calc sub menu. And we want, you could use either four, which is the linear regression, AX plus B, like MX plus B, right? But you could also use number eight. It's the same thing, just in a different order. I like to use four. It really doesn't matter. Okay, let's hit enter. Now it wants to know where are your X's and where are your Y's. My X's were those ages, which is in L1. So I'm just going to arrow down and my Y's were the screen time, which is in L2. So I'm going to arrow down again. Next, it wants to know, are you using a frequency list? I don't have multiples of this paired data. So I'm just going to hit delete here to get rid of that frequency list. 
Arrowing down, this one's actually super helpful. I am gonna store my regression equation and I'm gonna store it into one of my Y variables. So as I'm storing the regression equation, I'm gonna hit that variables key that we saw earlier. So I'm gonna click that and I want a Y variable. So arrowing over to my Y variables. Yes, I want a function variable. So I hit enter, I'm almost there. And I want it to be in Y1, which is already selected. I'm gonna hit enter. Okay, so it's gonna store my equation in Y1, and now I'm ready to calculate. Now it's given me some really, really great information. It's giving me the values of A and B. So the equation of this line is gonna be Y equals negative 19.9X plus 781.8. The next two numbers are incredibly important. I'm actually gonna talk about just the last one. The last one is our R value. R is gonna range between negative one and positive one. We really want it to be as close as possible to either of those extremes. The closer it is to negative one, the stronger of a negative or sloping down correlation you have. And the closer it is to positive one, the stronger of a positive correlation or sloping up that you've got. We've got a pretty strong negative correlation with that negative 0.88. So that R value is really helpful, but being able to graph the line along with those points is gonna be even more helpful. Let's take a look at that line. It is now in Y equals. I'm gonna hit Y equals. Notice how I've got my plot one highlighted and I've got my equation there. This is also a great way to get to the correct form of your regression equation. Um, let's hit graph. So as I hit graph, it does do a really nice job of modeling this data. Now your calculator does this, but so much more when it comes to statistics. I've got more for you here.